Hi, I'm Semen Yakov. This presentation is entitled Primary Control of Output Voltage and Current of LLC Converters. There are two references here which are relevant to this presentation. One is a video on flyback primary side control, which is very similar to what I'm going to touch on in this presentation. So this is a very good reference uh, for the details. And then there is a paper which shows a similar approach that I'm discussing here of the current control, of the primary side current control. And here is the reference. And I, I'm going to print the two in the description section of the video that you are now watching. Now, many systems need a isolated converter. In this case, usually we use a transformer. So we have a converter, we have a transformer for isolation. We have two ground, the input ground and the output ground. Here we have the rectifier, the output section. Now to control the output voltage, we do need to send a signal from the output back into the input. And therefore we need an isolation here. This could be opto isolator or some other isolator, which is kind of costly and also cumbersome. In this presentation, I'm going to show how to control both the voltage and current of the output without this feedback, isolated feedback. Now, since a transformer is used for isolation, one would have thought that you can use the fact that the relationship between the input current and the output current, input voltage and output voltage is according to the turn ratio. Now, this is incorrect for the practical transformer. The reason is that in a practical transformer, especially in an LLC, we'll see it in a minute, you do have a current through the magnetization inductance, which is not transferred to the output. And then you have a voltage drop due to the leakages. So the relationship between the voltage at the total input and total output and the current at the input and current at the output is not according to this relationship. And it could deviate quite a bit depending on this current, of course, and in LLC, it could be appreciable. Now we are talking about an LLC converter, which is a resonant converter. We have a resonant capacitor, resonant inductor, and then there is another resonant inductor L sub M, which is the magnetization usually of the transformer. The transformer is built in such a way that the primary inductance is the L sub N required for the operation of the LLC, which of course makes the problem more complex, as I have said, that you cannot just measure the current here because you have quite a bit of a current passing through this portion. This is now the actual transformer that we are using. And here is the basic schematics of an LLC converter, just to get familiar with the waveforms. We have a half bridge, this is a half bridge configuration. This is the L sub R resonant capacitor, L sub M, and then there is a coupling here to the secondary. There's a transfer ratio N, in this case it's 10, doesn't show here. Also, there is a coupling coefficient and what I'm going to show is really independent of the coupling coefficient. You would expect the coupling coefficient to be lower than one, of course, because uh, usually you would need here a gap, air gap, which will lower the coupling coefficient. At any rate, what I'm going to show, the method is independent of this uh, coupling coefficient. And then we have the output section, rectifier, full wave rectifier, uh, filter capacitor, and this is the output. So let's have a look at some waveform. I'm showing here the primary current. This is the current going into the transformer. This is the green one. I have scaled it times 10, so this should have been the same. This is the secondary current, the current at the secondary winding. They should have been the same. As you can see, they are not the same, not only in magnitude, but also in shape, because the current through the magnetization inductance is actually, we'll see, a triangular waveform, while at the output, it is like a more a sinusoidal shape. And here we see the input voltage and the output voltage of the transformer. And again, they are not exactly the same because of the voltage drop on the magnetization inductance. And this is the actually the output current. This is after rectification. Now, this current of the secondary after rectification and filtering 
is the output voltage, of course, uh, when passing through the resistor. So let's start with the primary side control of the output voltage. I'm showing here an auxiliary winding. This is a winding which is coupled to these two. I could have used the primary, but it's more convenient to use a secondary wind because you'll be able to separate the ground. Here I'm showing the same ground for primary and secondary. And we are going to look at this voltage and the output voltage. So this is the voltage of the auxiliary winding. And this is the output voltage. And what we see here, something very interesting, is at this point, the voltage across the auxiliary winding is very, very close to the output voltage. Now, the reason is that during this period, there is a current flowing, and therefore there are some voltage drop on the leakages. But as you approach this point, the current is tapering off, so the drops on the leakages, the voltage drop on the leakages is much, much smaller. So if we detect this point, this drop, and activate a sample and hole of this voltage, we are very, very close to the output. Now this is discussed in this video, which is for the flyback case, very, very similar to this case. So I'm not going to elaborate on it too much. Again, the method is looking at an auxiliary winding or the primary, but here I'm showing an auxiliary winding, and sampling the voltage at the drop of the voltage, meaning at the point where the current is actually tapering off to zero, and this sample is actually a representation of the output voltage. So let's move now to the primary side control of the output current. Now the total current can of course be sent by a resistor, but the voltage here is not the current going through this ideal transformer and then going to the output because it includes the magnetization inductance. That is this current here, which is the total current, is the current passing to the output through the transformer and the current through the magnetization inducted. So now, if I measure the voltage across this resistor, which represents the total current, and subtract from it a signal which is proportional to this current, okay, like doing a subtraction here, I'll end up with a signal which is proportional to the current going into actually the ideal transformer, which then can be translated to the output current through the transfer ratio. So this is the idea. The idea is to measure the total current, subtract from it the signal proportional to the magnetization current, and ending up with the actual current going to the primary, which is related to the output by the transfer ratio. Now to get the current through the magnetization inductance, there are actually a number of ways. One of them is just to put a inductor, expose it to the same voltage as the primary voltage of the transformer, and measure the current. So this will be the magnetization current. Because what we do, we just have a replica of this inductance here, just a replica, and measure the current through this replica, and this will represent the magnetization current, and then we can use it to get the secondary current. There is another way though, and that is to use an emulating capacitor to emulate the inductor. And in this case, we're going to feed a current which is proportional to the voltage. So we'll get a voltage on the current which is proportional to the current of the inductor, okay? So the current here is the excitation divided by the impedance of the inductor, excitation over the, over the impedance. The, the voltage here, assuming that the resistance is much larger than the impedance of the capacitor at the range of frequency that we are interested in, the current here is the voltage divided by the resistor. And then this current times the capacitor, here is the current, and this times the impedance of the capacitor is the voltage drop here. Now we can divide the two and we get that we can estimate the magnetization current by this current, 
times a constant, which depends on the n sub m, and rc of this circuit. So this would be a simple way to get an estimate of the magnetization current of the transformer. So here is a test circuit, just to test this idea. So what I did here, I put here an inductor, which is the same inductance value as the primary of the transformer, and then exposed it to the same voltage as the primary of the transformer. This is a behavioral source with the same voltage as across the transformer. So the current here will be equal to the current through the magnetization inductance of the transformer. And then I've put here another network here for emulating the current of the magnetization by a capacitor, as I've said, here's the resistor, and here's the capacitor. So let's have a look now at the voltage here, which represent the current here, which represent the current of the primary of the transformer. And we see here one above the other. This is the actual current of the auxiliary or test inductor that I've put. And this is the voltage across the capacitor. And they are one on top of the other. And as you can see, they are exactly the same. Now, it is a triangular waveform because the voltage of the transformer, the primary and secondary, and also the auxiliary, is about a square wave. It is a square wave because when the secondary is conducting, the secondary winding is clamped to the output. So you see here a square wave, which is reflected to the input as sort of a square wave too. So this is very typical of an LLC converter. And here is the relationship between the output voltage, which emulates the current, and this is the magnetization current. You see it's a straight line. And this is for a sweep of the input voltage between 50 and 200 volt. Okay, so the input voltage is changing and the current in the output is changing because there is no control here. So it is just affecting the input voltage, it's affecting immediately the output current, of course, in a linear way. And here is an example of the implementation of this concept that I've shown for controlling from the primary the current of the secondary through this idea of inductor emulation. So here is the sense resistor of the prime, total primary current. Now I'm subtracting from the voltage drop of this sense resistor, which represents the current, the signal that represents the magnetization current. Now the polarity here is that there is a subtraction. Also, I've added here a behavioral dependent source, which is basically a full wave rectifier. This is the absolute value of this signal here, which represent the primary current or the secondary current after taking into account the turns ratio. And then there is a filter here. So if everything works okay, the signal that we are going to see here should be proportional to the output current. Because here we have the secondary current, which we have estimated here, which is rectified and filtered. And the same thing we are going to do here. So this signal should be proportional to the output current. Now, first I'm showing here the current of the secondary and the emulated current throughout this measurement of the primary, subtracting the magnetization. And of course, with uh, adjusting the coefficient, you see that one is on top of the other. The, the emulation works perfect. And here is the relationship between the filtered output from the emulation and the actual load current. And again, it is a perfect linear relationship. And you see in this case, we have a factor of 10. So 2.4 amp at the output is 0.24 volt. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.